Our next topic in nuclear physics is the decay constant. And so what we're going to do here is find the decay constant of a radioactive material. And of course, a good example for that would be carbon-14, because we know the, um, the half-life of carbon-14. The half-life of carbon-14 is equal to 5,130 years, plus or minus a few years, not an exact number. But what does that really mean, the decay constant? Well, imagine that you start out with a certain amount of initial radioactive material. Let's say that this is carbon-14, and ends up not represents the initial amount, sometimes the number of radioactive nuclei in that sample. After a certain amount of time has elapsed, some of it will have decayed and some will be remaining, and so the amount remaining can be said that n, the number of remaining radioactive uh, nuclei, as a function of time. And of course, we can then imagine that the decay of that is logarithmic, so that this is kind of like a naturally decaying uh, element, and that that equation can then be represented by the amount remaining at any, at any point in time is equal to the initial amount you started with times e to the minus some constant times t. And that constant in front of the t is called the decay constant. That determines how fast the radioactive material will decay. If this is represented typically in most textbooks as lambda, don't know why they chose lambda, but that's what it is. And um, if lambda is a very big number, it decays quickly. If lambda is a very sm small number, it decays very slowly. So how do you determine that decay constant for a radioactive element? For example, for carbon-14. Well, by taking the equation, we can write that the amount at any point in time is equal to the amount you started with, and of course we're talking about the radioactive amount of that sample, times e to the minus lambda times t. And then we realize that this number will be half of that number when time, t, is equal to a half-life of that material. So what we can say then is that one-half, the original amount, is equal to the original amount times e to the minus lambda when t is replaced by the half-life of that material. And then, since we know what the half-life is, and we can then cancel out the ends of not on both sides, we can solve for lambda. So then you can see that, of course, lambda ends of not cancels out. We replace this by what the half-life is. And so we can say that 1 half is equal to e to the minus lambda times 5,730 years. Do put in the units for time because sometimes half-life is expressed in years, in days, in seconds. And so obviously we want to have that in there. Okay, the next thing to do would be to take the natural log of both sides. So we take the natural log of the left side, and that should equal the natural log of the right side, e to the minus lambda times 5,730 years. Of course, if you take the natural log of the right side, that will negate the exponent, right? Or at least e to the exponent. And so that means, if we then go over here, that the natural log of 1 half is equal to minus lambda times 5,730. 30 years. And so then if we divide both sides by 5,730 years and divide by negative sign, we get minus the natural log of 1 half divided by 5,730 years is equal to uh, the positive lambda. Uh, that doesn't kind of look like a lambda. Let me rewrite that. So there we go. And of course, turn the equation around and solving for the natural log of 1 half, we get lambda is equal to, and you find out that the natural log of 1 half is equal to a minus 0 0.693 divided by 5,730 years. And finally, when you negate the negative signs, you can then say that lambda, the decay constant we're looking for, is equal to 0 0.693 divided by, and you know what? Let me check that because somehow I'm getting the feeling that may not be the right number. So I just want to check. So 0 0.5, take the natural log of that. Yeah, it is correct. Good thing. All right, divided by 5,730 years. And that would be the decay constant of that particular element, this particular carbon-14. Now, in general then, of course, realizing that this is simply the negative of the natural log of, of 1 half, and this is simply the half-life, in general you can say that the decay constant can still be found by taking the negative of the natural log of 1 half and dividing it by the half-life of the, uh, of the radioactive material. And that's how you find the decay constant for any material. Then in a later video, we'll show you how to actually use that decay constant to find out the amount left 
at any point in time. It is easy to figure out how much you have left after one half-life or two half-lives or three half-lives, but what about two and a half or three and a quarter or just simply a number? How about how much carbon-14 is still radioactive from a sample if 10,000 years have elapsed? And then, of course, finally, you can then realize that once we know how to do that, we can actually use that information to date items that have carbon-14 in them, which is all living materials. Once it dies, they no longer consume carbon, they no longer replenish their carbon-14, and therefore, by how much is remaining in the fossils, we can actually figure out the age of those fossils. And we'll see in just a moment, well, just a moment, if you want to watch the next several videos, you'll see how we do that.